In late July 2015, the third phase of the Kurdish-Turkish conflict between various Kurdish insurgent groups and the Turkish government erupted following a failed two-and-a-half-year-long peace process, aimed at resolving the long-running conflict. The conflict between Turkey and the PKK broke out in summer 2015 following a two-year-long peace negotiations, which began in late 2012, but failed to progress in light of the growing tensions on border with Syria in late 2014, when Turkey prevented Kurds sending support to their militants who were fighting against ISIS during the siege of Kobani. Turkey was accused of assisting the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL during the crisis, resulting in widespread Kurdish riots in Turkey involving dozens of fatalities. The tensions further escalated in summer 2015 with the July 20 bombing in Saruç. On July 21, the PKK allegedly carried out a revenge attack and killed a Turkish soldier and wounded two more in Adıyaman. Some PKK supporters then claimed responsibility for the July 23 killing of two Turkish police officers in Salenpinar, describing it as a retaliation. A week after, group of communities in Kurdistan KCK spokesman Demhad Agat denied official PKK involvement, saying, These are the units independent from the PKK. They are local forces which organized themselves and not affiliated with us. On 24 July 2015, Turkey announced an official military operation against PKK targets in Iraqi Kurdistan and Rojava respectively, claiming to inflict dozens of fatalities on PKK fronts, which caused the PKK to withdraw from the peace talks and announce a full-scale rebellion against the government. The same day, Turkey also performed a nationwide crackdown on so-called PKK operatives, arresting hundreds, including People's Democratic Party members and leaders. The conflict then escalated, with PKK and its affiliated militias staging attacks across the country, and Turkish forces attacks in the form of aerial bombardments and operations in the east of the country, including the siege of Sizer in September 2015. In October 2015, the PKK declared a unilateral ceasefire for the November general elections. As of November 2015, Turkish authorities claimed that a number of towns and areas in eastern Turkey had come under the control of the PKK rebels and affiliated armed organizations. According to the Turkish government sources, between July 2015 and May 2016, 2,583 Kurdish rebels were killed in Turkey and 2,366 in northern Iraq, while 483 were killed among Turkish security forces. The PKK claimed 1,557 Turkish security forces were killed in 2015 during the clashes in north and south Kurdistan, while it lost 220 fighters. According to the International Crisis Group, 4,134 people, including 461 civilians, were killed in Turkey between July 2015 and October 2018, including ethnic Kurdish lawyer Tahir LC. In March 2017, the United Nations remarks concern over the Turkish government's operations and called for independent assessment for the alleged massive destruction, killings and numerous other serious human rights violations against the ethnic Kurdish minority. Background May On 8 May, the PKK's armed wing HPG announced that Turkish UAVs are flying over PKK camps. June On 9 June, the PKK reported several operations by the Turkish army against their troops. 2015 timeline July Saruç bombing and suspected Turkish ISIL retaliations On 20 July 2015, a bombing in the predominantly Kurdish district of Saruç, allegedly perpetrated by the Dakumasalar group linked to the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL, killed 32 young activists and injured over 100. Most victims were members of the Socialist Party of the Oppressed ESP Youth Wing and the Socialist Youth Associations Federation SGDF, university-aged students who were giving a press statement on their planned trip to reconstruct the Syrian border town of Kobani in the de facto autonomous federation of northern Syria, Rojava. 
On 21 July, the Turkish authorities claimed that the PKK's military wing has killed a Turkish soldier and wounded two more in Adıyaman, in retaliation for Saruç and what they claim was Turkey's collaboration with ISIL. On the 22nd of July, in Salenpinar, Turkey, two policemen were shot in the head by gunmen in their sleep. A week later, however, KCK spokesman Demhat Agat denied PKK involvement, saying, "These are the units independent from the PKK. They are local forces which organized themselves and not affiliated with us." Despite alleged claims that the PKK had previously claimed responsibility for the attack. Topic. Operation Martyr Yalsin against PKK The July 21 and 22 attacks were proclaimed a casus belli by the Turkish government, which resulted in Turkish Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu taking the decision to begin active air operations against PKK positions in Iraq. This was internationally perceived as the end of the ceasefire period in the Kurdish-Turkish conflict. The New York Times assessed that the Iraq raids, which began late Friday and continued into Saturday, effectively ended an unstable two-year ceasefire between the Turkish government and the Kurdish militants, also known by the initials of their Kurdish name, PKK." On 24 July, members of the PKK abducted a policeman in the province of Diyarbakir. Additionally two police officers were injured, one with life-threatening injuries, after a suspected PKK grenade attack in Hikari. On 25 July, two Turkish soldiers were killed and four were wounded in a car bomb attack in the province of Diyarbakir in Turkey by PKK fighters. Topic. Operations Arslan Kulaksız and Hamza Yildirim Turkish forces on 26 July reportedly again attacked the same village west of Kobani targeting Kurdish People's Protection Units YPG fighters, and fired on a YPG vehicle west of Tel Abayad. On 26 July, it was reported that F-16s yet again took off from Diyarbakir, this time only targeting PKK targets in northern Iraq. Although there was no official government statement on the airstrikes, PKK sources claimed that one of their key bases in Hakirk was attacked. It was reported that the number of fighter jets taking part was significantly lower than the jets that took part in the previous waves of the operation. The same day, Turkish artillery shelled a PKK position in the north of Iraq over several hours. On 27 July, in the province of Meuse, a predominantly Kurdish area, the Turkish head of the Gendarmerie of the Malaskar district was killed. On 28 July, for the first time since the beginning of the operation, two Turkish F-16s bombed PKK fighters inside Turkey, in the province of Cernik. On 28 July, the pipeline between Turkey and Iran was blown up in the province of Agri in Turkey. According to the authorities, PKK involvement was suspected while, in a predominantly Kurdish town, a sergeant of the Turkish army was killed. According to the army, the PKK is responsible. In another province, a police officer was kidnapped by suspected Kurdistan Workers' Party PKK militants in southeastern Turkey. On 28–29 July, a new wave of shelling was launched on the night connecting the 28th and 29th. PKK camps in Zap, Matina, Gera, Avisan Basian, Hikirk and the Kandil Mountains in northern Iraq were hit by Turkish fighter jets in an operation named after the recently killed Gendarmerie Major, Arslan Kulaksız. On 29 July, the oil pipeline between Kirkuk Iraq and Sehan Turkey was blown up in the East Turkey, in the Cernik province while in Hikari, police quarters was under attack with heavy arms, including rocket launchers and long barrel rifles. In another attack, one soldier was killed and four other were wounded in an attack in the Dagubayazit district in the eastern province of Agri. On 30 July, Turkish fighter jets flew over the YPG-held towns of Kobani and Sarin at the same time as an ISIS attack on Sarin town. On 31 July, Turkish reconnaissance aircraft once again flew over YPG territory in the north of Syria. While in Iraq, Turkish fighter jets shelling massively PKK positions. On 30 July, a policeman and a civilian were killed in the town of Sinar by PKK guerrilla according to the authority, while three soldiers were killed in the attack of their convoy by PKK fighters in the province of Cernik. On 31 July, Turkish fighter jets shelled bases of PKK in the north of Iraq, with 30 warplanes were involved. This operation was named, 
Hamza Yildirim, in honor of the Corporal Hamza Yildirim killed by the PKK in Turkey few days earlier. On 31 July, two policemen and two PKK fighters were killed by the PKK, in a PKK raid on a police station in Posanti, Adana. In a separate incident, PKK rebels bombed a railway line in the province of Kars in the country's east, killing a worker, while three PKK fighters were killed in Agri province. <laughs> August On 1 August, two PKK fighters were killed and one civilian wounded in an attack in Kadok while PKK fighters took 70 hostages for two hours in the Kars Erzurum Igdir Highway. One soldier was killed in a mine explosion in Kars Province, reportedly by PKK. On 2 August, a suicide bomber attacked a military station in Dagabayazit, Agri Province. The attack resulted in the deaths of two Turkish soldiers and 31 injuries. Separately one soldier was killed and four injured after a military convoy hit a mine in the Mardin province. Both attacks were blamed on the PKK. On 3 August, two Turkish soldiers were injured after a landmine exploded in Diyarbakir, reportedly by the PKK. On 4 August, PKK forces attacked a guard post in Cernik province with an RPG killing one soldier and injuring another. In a separate attack, a mine killed two soldiers, also in Cernik province resulting in Turkish F-16s targeting PKK camps in the country's Hikari province, with no information on casualties. On 5 August, a PKK bombing left one civilian dead in Sizer, Cernik province. Another bombing, this time in Bitlis, caused no casualties or damage. Clashes occurred, in Diyarbakir province, Hikari province and Bitlis province with no reported casualties. On 6 August, clashes were reported in Tuncheli province, with no reported casualties. On 7 August, PKK attacks left eight dead during numerous attacks. In Silopi, Cernik province, five were killed during clashes between police and the PKK, resulting in the deaths of at least one soldier and one police officer. In Dagabayazit, Agri province, a PKK attack left one soldier and one militant dead. A PKK attack on a police patrol in Milyat, Mardin province killed one police officer. Elsewhere clashes were reported in Sizer and Uladere, Cernik province, Baskel, Van province and Nusabin, Mardin province. PKK militants were also reported to have hijacked a minibus near Betisabap, Cernik province. On 10 August, nine people were killed in a series of PKK attacks in Turkey. In Istanbul, a car bomb targeted a police station, injuring ten police officers, one police officer and two attackers were killed in subsequent clashes. Two others attackers launched an attack on the U.S. consulate in Istanbul however there were no casualties, police arrest one of the attackers, a female, in clashes following the attack. In Silopi, Cernik province, a mine hit a police convoy killing four officers. In Betasabap, Cernik province, militants opened fire on a military helicopter, killing one soldier. Turkish security forces killed a female PKK fighter named Kevzer Elturk, took a picture of her body after they stripped her naked, and distributed the photo and they were congratulated by Turkish nationalists. On 13 August, three people were killed in PKK attacks, a gendarmery sergeant was killed by a PKK landmine in Bingal province. Two PKK insurgents were killed in clashes in Betasabap, Cernik province. On 14 August, four soldiers were killed in a series of PKK attacks. Three soldiers were killed and six injured during clashes with the PKK in Daglika, Hikari province. A civilian was killed during clashes between police and the PKK in Bagler, Diyarbakir province. On 19 August, four Turkish police officers were killed by a roadside bomb. Topic. September On 3 September, PKK killed four Turkish police officers in Mardin province. On September 5, the Turkish security forces besieged Sizer, in a one-week operation. The operations were reported to result in about 30 deaths among city's Kurdish residents. On 6 September, PKK killed 16 Turkish soldiers by a double bombing on a military convoy in Hikari province. On 8 September, PKK forces ambushed a police minibus killing 14 officers. A second attack also resulted in the shooting and killing of a police officer by PKK forces. 
On 25 September, two Turkish soldiers were killed and nine injured during clashes with the PKK. On 25 the 26th of September 34 Kurdish rebels four civilians and two Turkish soldiers were killed in Cernak province PKK sources claimed 14 Kurdish rebels and 75 Turkish soldiers were killed the Turkish police used Armenian as an insult to refer to the Kurdish people in Sizer and Burhan Kuzu, a senior advisor to the President of Turkey, claimed that PKK members were uncircumcised implying that they were non-Muslim Armenians, suggesting that non-Muslims are terrorists and trying to drive a wedge between Muslim Kurds and the PKK. October On 2 October, the Turkish military entered the southeastern city of Silvan, in the Diyarbakir province with tanks, armoured carriers and hundreds of troops to seek out and destroy PKK elements within the city. Resulting clashes left at least 17 PKK militants dead while PKK-affiliated locals alleged the Turkish military had bombed civilian areas with artillery. On 4 October, a video was released in which Hasi Lokman Berlik, a 24-year-old protester, was killed by Turkish security forces before his body was tied to a police car and dragged through the streets. Some pro-government journalists and AKP members called the released video from the incident as a fake and photoshopped, while other Turkish newspapers, such as Saba called it a common routine against terrorists. The pro-government, AKP Saba newspaper defended the act and claimed that Dragging corpses by armored vehicles was standard procedure in case of a body being booby-trapped with explosives which is relatively common for terrorists to do." Hasi Lokman Berlik was a brother-in-law of HDP MP Leila Berlik who the government accused of being a PKK affiliate. Later, Prime Minister of Turkey, Ahmet Davutoglu, said, "...it is not acceptable," and claimed that both officers who were responsible of dragging the body of Berlik were fired. However, the HDP released a statement stating that both officers haven't been fired and claims of Ahmet Davutoglu are not true. On 10 October, a double suicide bombing was carried out in Ankara during an anti-war demonstration rally held by pro-Kurdish, leftist and communist civilians. The bombing resulted in at least 102 killed amongst the demonstrators. November. On 5 November, the Turkish military concluded the 40-day-long 2015 Hakkari assault ground offensive in the mountains of the southeastern border province in which hundreds of PKK fighters were killed, dozens of their bunkers were destroyed and dozens of anti-aircraft weaponry was captured. On 15 November, the Turkish Air Force bombarded 44 different locations with F-16s F-4E-2020 Terminators and unmanned drones in northern Iraq in response to the PKK attempting to reconstruct depots, barracks, bunkers and hideouts that were destroyed earlier in the year by the airstrikes conducted on 31 July. On 21 November, the Turkish Air Force struck 23 different locations in the Cernic border province and in northern Iraq destroying caches and hideouts severing PKK supply lines. On Saturday these included supply and shelter points in the mountains of Semedinli, Hakkari, southeast Turkey, north of their Iraqi and Iranian borders. On the 22nd of November, the Turkish Air Force struck seven different locations in the Hakkari province on the Iraqi border killing ten PKK militants and destroying several shelters and supply points. Two civilians were also killed during the curfew in the Nusaybin district of Mardin province on the Sunday in which on Monday 23rd entered its tenth consecutive day. The Turkish Chief of General Staff earlier this year released a statement saying the military is sensitive when it comes to civilian casualties who are caught up in armed clashes. <laughs> December On 2 December, PKK militants set a remote-controlled IED trap for a Turkish army convoy, killing one soldier and injuring nine others in the explosion in the Mardin province. On 2 December, PKK militants launched an armed attack on a police checkpoint during an curfew in Sur injuring one officer and killing three PKK insurgents in the clash. On 8 December, the Turkish Air Force launched nighttime airstrikes consisting of 10 F-16s into northern Iraq's Kandal, Harkuk, Zap and Avacyn Basian regions. 
On 13 December, PKK militants launched 18 different explosive attacks on a police station in Darjeset consisting of anti-armor RPG rockets and grenades injuring three police officers and three civilians just hours after counter-insurgency operation in the same town killed 11 militants. On 15 December, the Turkish army and police launched a massive-scale terror hunt operation in Cernik province's towns of Sizer and Silopi imposing an initial 24-hour curfew to prevent civilian casualties and maximize troop movement throughout the town." The HDP, Turkey's Kurdish and second-largest opposition party notably urged PKK militant elements to «resist» the operations. Traditionally focused on the countryside, the PKK has shifted to towns, setting up barricades and digging trenches to keep security forces away. On 17 December, in seven days Turkish army troops joined alongside with police special operations backed by tanks, armoured vehicle units, and helicopters killed over 127 militants as well as capturing at least three wanted, high-value PKK leaders as of December 18. Security forces raided cleared abandoned houses and trenches, destroyed barricades while fighting through and liberating militant stronghold neighbourhoods. In total, thousands of kilos of explosives and hundreds of assault weapons were seized. Tank shelling and artillery strikes in the surrounding mountains were also conducted along with the urban offensive that mainly focused on PKK housing, cut-off neighborhood strongholds and sniper positions targeting security forces. It is estimated half the town's population had been driven out since violence sparked up earlier in the year leaving many unoccupied apartments and houses to be utilized by the PKK to fortify and reinforce their presence prior to this operation. On 18 December, the Turkish Minister of the Interior Efkan Ala declared over 3,000 PKK militant had been neutralized, 10 tons of explosives had been seized, and 2,240 weapons had been captured since the collapse of the ceasefire earlier that year in late July. On 21 December, a roadside bomb in Bitlis killed two soldiers and injured eight others during an anti-PKK operation. On 21 December, an armed PKK assault in Sur district of Diyarbakir killed one soldier during an army curfew reinforcement patrol put in place to let police forces root out PKK hideouts. On 30 December, three soldiers were wounded when PKK rebels detonated an IED bomb in Sur. On 31 December, one police officer was killed and five others were injured during a police operation to disassemble barricades and fill in ditches dug up by militants when PKK rebels fired a rocket upon security forces in Sizer. Four of the injured officers who were in urgent condition were sent to the capital, Ankara for further medical treatment. On 31 December, one police officer died after a PKK bomb attack in Sur during a house operation against rebels. In the same operation Turkish security forces had seized an RPG, three rockets, an anti-tank missile, 30 electric bomb detonators and numerous PKK propaganda leaflets that police say aimed at provoking the public. 2016 timeline January On 1 January 12 PKK militants, two police and a civilian were killed in Sizer, a police officer was killed in Sur. A soldier and one civilian was killed in Silopi A Turkish tank malfunctioned and was damaged in Sizer. A total of 18 were killed that day. On 3 January, mine trap set by the PKK the previous night in a neighborhood killed three Turkish soldiers in Sur. On 4 January, rocket attacks launched by the PKK's youth militant arm YDGH at security forces in Cernik resulted in an incurring shootout in which two rebels were killed. On 7 January, Turkish forces killed 16 militants in Sizer and two in Sir bringing the PKK death toll over the last three weeks in the to 426. On 7 January, the Turkish military captured 58 PKK militants fleeing to Iraq disguised as local villagers in the town of Silopi of the Cernik province. On 8 January, Turkish Police Special Operations, Rapid Response Force Riot Police and Police Intelligence Teams raided a HDP Kurdish Opposition Party's office in Istanbul arresting five Kurdish politicians after police were informed that the murder weapon of the July 22, 2015 murder of two police officers conducted by PKK rebels in their sleep in Salenpinar was being held in that office. 
On 9 January, a soldier and a police officer were shot dead in an attack by PKK rebels in Diyarbakir, Turkey's largest predominantly Kurdish southeastern city. On 10 January, heavy clashes during a counter-terrorism operation between the PKK and police in Eastern Van killed 12 PKK rebels and a police officer. Security forces say the operation successfully prevented a large-scale attack against government buildings. On 10 January, Turkish troops killed 20 PKK militants in Sizer, Silopi and Sir during clashes. On 12 January, Turkish police detained 16 suspects belonging to the YDGH in Elizig during a raid in which documents explicitly planning a crowd demonstration to harm public buildings and boast PKK propaganda was seized similar to the January 7 elementary school burning incident in Cernik. The documents themselves are believed to be handed down from the PKK to the YDGH youth group. On 12 January, the Turkish Air Force conducted nighttime air strikes on PKK camps in the Great Zab, Ger, Avishin, and Basian regions of northern Iraq using four F-16Ds and two F-4 Terminator 2020s technologically modernized heavy combat aircraft whilst using drones to locate camps, quartering caves and shelters prior to the strike. In the same statement to press the Turkish armed forces stated that 578 terrorists had been killed since December 15, bringing the overall PKK death toll to 3,678 since July 2015. On 14 January, a car bomb targeting a police station and police housing unit adjacent to the station killed six people and injured 40 in Sinar, Diyarbakir, southeastern Turkey. Amongst the dead were relatives of police including a family consisting of a wife, a five-year-old and an infant. Upon the initial bomb attack, PKK militants opened fire using rockets and assault weapons on the security complex resulting in a fierce fire fight. The PKK claim the attack left over 30 police officers dead as quoted by pro-Kurdish media, however admits than five civilian were killed as a result of the attack. On 14 January, Turkish army troops killed 19 PKK militants in a government operations as well as capturing a total of 10 PKK militants and affiliates. According to the Turkish general staff, 12 were killed in heavy clashes in Sizer, 5 were killed and 10 were captured in Silopi, and 2 were killed in Sir. On 15 January, one Turkish police special operations officer was wounded and killed in an raid on a PKK sleeper cell in Syart by sniper fire from PKK rebels. According to Turkish media reports, over 15,000 people attended the funeral of the slain officer Yalsin Yaminer in Tokat. The family of the slain officer whom were being accommodated in police family lodges are to be bought a house on the behalf of the General Directorate of Security. On 18 January, a total of three service members of the Turkish Police Special Operation Department were killed and seven were wounded in a nighttime IED trap set the day before targeting the convoy in Edeal. Ensuing heavy clashes reportedly lasted till dawn. On 18 January, two police special operations officers were killed and twelve were wounded in the Yenimahali neighborhood of Cernik province when a police bus was struck by a rocket fired by PKK insurgents. On 18 January, a Turkish army specialized sergeant succumbed to his injuries and died shortly after being critically wounded by sniper fire in Sir. On 19 January, Sizer Municipal Council member Abdulhamit Pokal and Selman Erdogan were killed and IMC TV cameraman Refik Tekin along with ten others were wounded during a firefight between Turkish security forces and Kurdish militants though it is not clear who opened fire on the group. Pro-Kurdish sources allege that it was the Turkish side. On 19 January, Turkish forces conducted an operation extracting a family from their neighborhood who had received threats from the PKK to not leave and stopping those who attempt to. The PKK calls for Kurds in the region to not leave their houses and participate in the so-called resistance. On 19 January, three police special operations members were wounded when PKK militants opened fire on units removing roadblocks, dismantling barricades and filling up trenches set up by PKK elements. On 20 January, two Turkish soldiers were severely injured and later died when a homemade bomb planted by PKK militants detonated during an ant-terror operation in Sur. On 21 January, new Turkish military raids as Silopi led to the discovery of a U.S.-made RQ-20 Puma UAV in the hands of PKK militants. 
Turkish military officials believe that the aerial surveillance drone was handed to PKK elements by the YPG, the PKK's sister group based in Syria who are backed by the US despite fierce Turkish objection. The discovery of the drone by Turkish troops further confirmed Turkey's suspicions of US and various European weapons being supplied to the YPG would eventually end up in PKK hands. Despite the PKK being recognized as a terrorist organization by the United States, and the European Union, its sister organization, in which its fighters often overlap, is only recognized as a terrorist organization by Turkey. On 27 January, while clearing out booby-trapped barricades in Sur, four members of the Turkish security forces were killed in a simultaneously launched attack consisting of pre-planted remote detonated explosives, rocket and sniper fire by PKK militants consisting of three army soldiers and a police special operations officer while also wounding critically wounding six others. According to the Turkish army, ensuing fierce clashes killed nine PKK militants. On 29 January, two Turkish troops were killed in separate armed attacks by PKK militants in Sur and Sizer. The soldiers reportedly succumbed to their injuries, despite all medical intervention. On 31 January, a Turkish soldier and two police officers were killed in clashes with the Kurdistan Workers' Party on Rehan Street in Sizer's Kudi neighborhood. February. On 1 February, three Turkish soldiers and two police were killed in the Sur district of Diyarbakir. On 3 February, the Turkish Air Force launched a massive scale air strike operation consisting of around 40 jets and hit over 100 targets in northern Iraq. Targets hit included a PKK meeting in Kandil. On 7 February, an intense hours long raid on a PKK safe house where notorious members were based launched by Turkish Army alongside the Police Special Operation Department killed 60 PKK militants in the basement of an apartment building. Three Turkish troops were wounded amongst the fierce clashes by a bomb trap. During the raid, PKK militants were allegedly speaking on the phone with a Kurdish HDP minister who remains anonymous. On 12 February, Turkish army troops killed 16 PKK militants in the town of Sizer, 5 in Sur and 6 in Hakkari province bringing the overall PKK death toll to 27 while 24 bodies of PKK militants killed in previous operations were recovered the same day. On 17 February, a Kurdistan Freedom Hawks talk militant carried out a car bomb attack in Turkey's capital of Ankara killing 28 people, including 27 military personnel, and injuring a further 61. The attack targeted a bus full of military personnel in close proximity to the Turkish Armed Forces Department of Defense and Parliament Building. Security forces have currently detained 14 people in connection with the bombing. The government held both the YPG and PKK responsible for the attack, even after the talk claimed responsibility. It was later confirmed by DNA reports that the perpetrator was a talk militant. On 18 February, Turkish Air Force fighter jets launched large scale air strikes in northern Iraq in response to the previous day's Ankara bombing, hitting a group of 60 to 70 rebels, including senior commanders in Kandil. On 18 February, a roadside bomb in Diyarbakir province killed six Turkish troops, while another two were killed in armed attacks in the Cernik province. On 19 February, three Turkish soldiers were killed during operations against PKK militants in a building collapse. On 20 February, Turkish F-16s stuck PKK shelters and bunkers in northern Iraq's Kandil region. On 23 February, Turkish forces killed six PKK militants in clashes in Edil. On 24 February, the Turkish forces killed 20 PKK militants in heavy clashes during ongoing counter-insurgency operations in Edil. On 24 February, Turkish Army A-1 Super Cobra attack helicopters killed 12 PKK militants attempting to infiltrate the town of Edil from the Syrian border. March On 1 March, Turkish authorities partially lifted their curfew on the town of Sizer. On 6 March, released data stating that 1,250 militants had been killed since July of last year in the Nusaybin, Darjeset and Derik districts of Mardin province. 
The report furthermore stated that over 3,000 explosives targeting security forces had been defused and 2,307 barricades and ditches were dismantled and filled. On 6 March, six convicted PKK militants broke out of Diyarbakir prison. Roll call indicated six were shown missing. As a result, security measures at the prison were increased and an operation to locate the whereabouts of the escapees are underway. On 7 March, Turkish troops killed four PKK militants in the Sur district of Diyarbakir province and defused 16 explosive devices aimed at sabotaging troops. On 7 March, Turkish counter-insurgency operations killed six PKK militants in Edil. Turkish troops defused a total of 18 explosive devices in the same operation. On 9 March Turkish airstrikes reportedly hit PKK shelters, ammunition depots and supply lines in northern Iraq explained in a statement in the 11th of March airstrikes. On the 11th of March, Turkish Air Force airstrikes reportedly killed at least 67 PKK militants in northern Iraq. Turkish F-16s and F-4E Terminator 2020s reportedly struck PKK headquarters situated on the Iran-Iraq border. I on 13 March, a suspected PKK car bombing in the capital Ankara killed 37 civilians and injured a further 125 when the car accelerated and crashed into a bus before exploding in one of the busiest areas in the city and just a few hundred yards from the Prime Minister's office. Those killed include the father of renowned soccer player Umit Bulut. Four days later, the talk claimed responsibility for the attack. On 14 March, a day after the Ankara bombing, 11 Turkish Air Force warplanes struck 18 different targets in northern Iraq in response to the suspected PKK bombing. At least 45 suspect PKK militants were killed. On 16 March, Turkish police detained 73 PKK terror suspects including lawyers throughout the country during simultaneous raids in connection to the March 2016 Ankara bombing. On 21 March, four Turkish army troops and a police special operations operative were killed in a bomb attack in Nusaybin. On the 22nd of March, an attack by PKK militants killed a Turkish soldier and injured six others in Nusaybin. On 23 March, Turkish Air Force F-16s and F-4 Terminator 2020s struck several PKK targets in northern Iraq and in Turkey's bordering southeastern mountains including shelters, caves, weapons caches, and militants killing at least 24 insurgents. On 24 March Turkish forces killed a PKK-linked YPS leader in Cernik. On 24 March, three Turkish troops were killed in a PKK bomb attack in Nusaybin. On 28 March, documents were released by the Turkish government which indicated that they have made a decision to illegally confiscate 9,000 acres of property in the historic city centre of Diyarbakir, including thousands of private properties and six churches owned by religious foundations. The Turkish government claims that they appropriated the land and properties in the historic district in order to rebuild and repair them, although locals are skeptical of this, with the appropriation sparking more conflict in the region. On 29 March, a leading official from the ruling party AKP was kidnapped by PKK militants. On 29 March, ongoing Turkish military operations killed 16 PKK militants in Nusaybin. On 29 March, Turkish troops killed 9 PKK militants during clashes in Cernik. On 29 March, Turkish troops killed three PKK militants and recovered one body of a previously killed militant during clashes in Yuksekova on 31 March. Seven police officers were killed and 27 people were injured by a PKK car bomb in Diyarbakir after a vehicle laden with explosives rammed into a police bus and detonated. Topic April On 1 April, a Turkish soldier was killed in Nusaybin as a result of an armed PKK attack during ongoing military operations. On 2 April, a Turkish soldier was killed in Cernik during armed PKK attack. On 2 April, five Turkish troops and a police special operations officer was killed in Nusaybin by an IED bomb planted by PKK militants. On 3 April, Turkish forces killed 17 militants in Yuksekova, six in Nusaybin and four in Cernik in anti-insurgency operations bringing the total to 27. On 4 April, a Turkish soldier was killed by PKK militants during clashes in Nusaybin. 
On 4 April, a member of the paramilitary Kurdish village guard forces whom are fighting alongside Turkish forces against PKK insurgents, was killed by PKK militants disguised as doctors in front of a clinic in Bitlis. On 5 April, Turkish Air Force F-16s and F-4 Terminator 2020s attacked PKK targets in the Kandil Mountains of northern Iraq. Targets struck include PKK weapons caches, ammunition depots and militant shelters killing 67 militants. On 5 April, a Turkish army tank en route to ongoing regional military operations traveling as a part of an armored convoy through the mountainous terrain of Uladere fell off of a cliff tumbling into a canyon below killing one crew member and injuring another. On 6 April, a Turkish soldier was killed by PKK militants during an attack on a convoy en route to a military operation in Bismil. On 6 April, a Kurdish village guard was killed in clashes with PKK militants in Bitlis. On 7 April, a Turkish soldier and police special operations officer was killed by an IED bomb attack in Nusaybin during ongoing military operations to root out militants. On 8 April, Turkish warplanes struck unspecified targets in southeastern Turkey and northern Iraq. On 8 April, Turkish forces killed 12 PKK militants in military operations in the country's southeast, seven in Nusaybin, three in Hikari and two militants in Cernik. On 10 April, the Turkish army launched an operation in Hikari killing 19 PKK militants in various districts. Turkish troops recovered dozens of handmade bombs, AK-47 style assault rifles, RPG-7 rockets and rocket launchers during the operation which lasted around an hour. On 12 April, a massive truck bomb attack by PKK militants on the Hani Regional Gendarmerie headquarters killed three Turkish soldiers and injured 54 others. On 12 April, during clashes between Turkish troops and PKK in Hikari an explosion unknown and random explosion most likely from an IED bomb killed one soldier and injured four others. On 12 April, a gun attack by PKK militants killed one soldier and injured four others during ongoing military operations in Cernik. On 12 April, a gun attack by PKK militants killed one soldier and critically injured another in Nusaybin. On 13 April, Jamil Atesh, a senior PKK militant leader was killed during clashes with security forces in Meuse. On 16 April, five police special operations officers were killed and six others were wounded by a roadside bomb in Sever. On 17 April 23 PKK militants were killed in the mountains of Tuncheli in a military operation by troops and attack helicopters after a Turkish UAV spotted a group of militants. On 21 April, Turkish F-16s carried out air strikes in the mountains of Hikari and Cernik destroying PKK targets. On of April, three Turkish soldiers were killed by a roadside bomb planted by PKK militants in Tuncheli. On of April, Turkish forces killed eight PKK militants in ongoing military operations in Cernik. On the 22nd of April, Turkish forces killed four PKK militants in ongoing military operations in Nusaybin. On the 22nd of April, Turkish troops killed 18 PKK militants attempting to cross the border into Syria's Kamishli region from Turkey's southeastern Nusaybin region. On the 22nd of April, Turkish troops killed six PKK militants in Mardin and Cernik. On 23 April, a Turkish gendarmerie soldier was killed by PKK sniper fire in Mardin. On 23 April, Turkish Air Force F-16s and F-4E 2020 Terminator fighter jets struck several targets in northern Iraq. On 25 April, two Turkish soldiers were killed by a bomb attack by PKK in Mardin. On 27 April, one police officer was killed and two were wounded in an attack by PKK in Varto. On 28 April, two soldiers and ten PKK members were killed in counter-terrorism operations. On 30 April 20 Turkish fighter jets struck scores of PKK targets in air raids in northern Iraq and Cernak's vast and mountainous border region within Turkey. May On 1 May, three Turkish soldiers were killed and 14 others were wounded in the Nusaybin district when the PKK attacked an army bomb disposal team with rockets. On 2 May 24 PKK militants were killed in ongoing military operations in the southeast, seven were killed in Cernik, six in Nusaybin, six in Kukurka and five in Semdinli. 
On 2 May 2018 PKK militants were killed in air strikes by F-16 and F-4 Terminator 2020 fighter jets in the Kandil Mountains of northern Iraq. On 6 May, PKK militants killed a Turkish soldier with a missile. On 6 May, the Turkish Air Force launched a second round of air strikes in northern Iraq following up those conducted earlier in the week. On 7 May, two PKK militants were killed in the province of Tuncheli by Turkish forces. On 8 May 12 PKK militants were killed in northern Iraq in air strikes launched by Turkish Air Force F-16s. Targets also included PKK bunkers, gun emplacements and ammunition depots. On 10 May 12 PKK militants were killed in ongoing military operations. Eight in Cernik, and four in Nusaybin. On 12 May, four PKK militants and 13 civilians were killed in a premature explosion while loading a truck with heavy explosives in preparation of an attack on Turkish forces. On 13 May, six Turkish troops and 22 PKK militants were killed in a PKK attack in Kukurka. On 13 May, two Turkish pilots died in a helicopter crash caused by a PKK-fired manpad in the mountains of Hakkari. The attack helicopter was en route to engage PKK militants attacking Turkish troops in Kukurka. Turkish media initially tried to present the incident as an accident. On 14 May, the Turkish Air Force launched a series of airstrikes killing 12 PKK militants in Turkey's southeast as well as northern Iraq. On 14 May, a PKK attack killed one Turkish soldier and two PKK militants in the resulting clash in Yüksekova. On 15 May, the Turkish military announced that it had killed 35 PKK militants in military operations. 18 were killed by air strikes into the Kandil Mountains of northern Iraq, 8 killed in Cernik, 4 in Sarakamis, 3 in Yüksekova and 2 in Nusaybin. On 15 May, 5 PKK militants surrendered to security forces in Silopi. On 16 May, a Turkish police special operations officer succumbed to his wounds and died in cars. On 16 May, two Turkish soldiers died in Nusaybin after an PKK attack. On 17 May, the Turkish Air Force launched large-scale bombardments and airstrikes into northern Iraq striking 26 different PKK targets including bunkers, weapons depots, gun positions, caves, and barracks. On 18 May, four Turkish soldiers were killed and nine others were wounded when PKK militants detonated a roadside bomb in Hikari ambushing a surpassing convoy. On 18 May, Turkish Air Force F-16s and F-4E Terminator 2020s launched overnight airstrikes into northern Iraq killing 10 PKK militants. On the 22nd of May 30 PKK militants were killed in Turkish airstrikes into northern Iraq. On 24 May, six Turkish soldiers were killed after a PPK attack on Van Province, Daly Saba. On 25 May, YPS said it withdrew its forces in Nusaybin. Also 67 PKK members surrendered in 20-25 May. HDP claims they are civilians, not PKK fighters. On 28 May, the Gendarmerie General Command branch of the military, which is in charge of law enforcement in areas that fall outside the jurisdiction of the police, announced that it had deployed an additional 2,000 troops to southeastern Turkey to reinforce ongoing anti-insurgency operations. On 28 May, Turkey President Recep Tayyip Erdogan made a speech to Islamist supporters in the town of Diyarbakir which gained global attention as he referred to our enemy, presumed to be the PKK and its supporters, as atheists and Zoroastrians. On 29 May, Turkish Air Force fighter jets struck several PKK targets in northern Iraq killing at least 14 PKK militants. On 29 May, two Turkish soldiers were killed by PKK sniper fire opened upon a military installation in Uladere while another soldier was wounded and killed during military operations in Syart. On 30 May, two police special operations officers were killed by a bomb trap by PKK militants in Ipekulu. On 30 May, Zamani Kakmak, a senior PKK leader whom had orchestrated several deadly terrorist attacks was shot dead by Turkish security forces during ongoing military operations in Nusaybin. On 31 May, the Turkish Air Force launched airstrikes into northern Iraq hitting six different positions. <laughs> June 
On 2 June, one Turkish army soldier was killed in a PKK attack and the Nusaybin district of the southeastern province of Mardin. On 5 June, seven PKK militants were killed in Semdinli during ongoing military operations. On 5 June 20 PKK militants were killed in Hakkari border province and northern Iraq after a series of Turkish military air strikes. Turkish Air Force F-16s reportedly struck caves, shelters, weapons caches and other militant positions. On 5 June, the Turkish General Staff announced that it has shifted the direction of operations against PKK militants from urban centers to rural areas in the country's southeastern and eastern parts. On 5 June, one Turkish army soldier and one feudalist village guard were killed in two separate PKK attacks in the southeastern province of Cernik and in the Black Sea province of Gumashane. On 6 June, Turkish Air Force jets launched another round of airstrikes into northern Iraq for the second day in a row again hitting PKK positions and elements. On 7 June, a PKK car bomb killed 11 people including seven police officers in Istanbul as a vehicle laden with explosives detonated as a convoy of police buses were passing through a busy street during morning rush hour. Turkish Prime Minister Benali Yildirim named the PKK as being responsible for the terrorist attack. However, the Kurdistan Freedom Hawks organization took responsibility. On 8 June, another car bomb killed five people including two female police officers in the southeastern town of Midyat. One of the police officers killed was six months pregnant and former Turkish President Abdullah Gül's body guard. On 9 June, two feudalist village guards were killed and another wounded in a PKK attack in the Semdinli district of the southeastern province of Cernik. On of June, the Turkish Air Force launched widespread air strikes in northern Iraq and in Turkey's Lice, Hakkari and Syrt regions killing 13 PKK militants. The strikes came after PKK movement was spotted by UAVs. On of June, three PKK militants were killed in Ipekyalu during ongoing military operations. On of June, two Turkish army soldiers were killed while four others wounded in a PKK attack on the Tekeli military base in the Semdinli district of southeastern province of Hakkari. On 14 June, a first media source claimed that the new Turkish government under Prime Minister Benali Yildirim had immediately after assuming office on 24 May come to an agreement with the PKK, entailing that PKK guerrillas must retreat from the Kurdish cities in southeastern Turkey, and the Turkish government, in return, will allow the Syrian Democratic Forces to control the areas in the west of Euphrates River in northern Syria, and that, Ankara has also agreed to move the jailed PKK leader Abdullah Akalan, from Amrali Island prison in the Marmara Sea to another location and place him under house arrest, and resume negotiations with PKK as part of the agreement." The SDF's Manbij offensive in northern Syria for the Federation of Northern Syria, Rojava has been going since 1 June. On 15 June, a feudalist, village guard, was killed and another was wounded in a PKK attack in the eastern province of Meuse. On 15 June, Selahattin Demeritas and Figan Yuksekda, co-chairs of the HDP, released a statement stating that, "...while armed clashes have stopped in all these urban districts, curfews are still in effect for full days in some districts, while at night in some others," and that, "...Erdogan AKP rule is directly responsible for all this destruction and suffering." The crimes against humanity committed by them are piling up with every passing day." They demanded that, "...the ongoing round-the-clock curfews, blockades and destruction in Kurdish cities and towns should be immediately stopped. All the obstacles that prevent residents from safely returning to their homes should be removed." On 16 June, HDP co-chairman Selahattin Demeritas called on the Kurdistan Freedom Hawks to dissolve. On 21 June, Prime Minister and AKP Chairman Benali Yildirim declared the end of military operations in Turkey's southeast and said the government would now focus on reconstruction of cities damaged by clashes between the security forces and the PKK. However, he threatened to now take action against HDP councillors in municipalities in the southeast. On the 22nd of June, one Turkish army soldier was killed and two were wounded in a PKK attack in the province of Cernik. 
On the 22nd of June, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said that in his handling of the conflict he considered himself successful in having civil society groups working against Turkish state largely destroyed. A conclusion that had been confirmed some days earlier by Sedat Laysener, professor of international relations and rector of the Kanakal Ansikis Mart University, outlawing unarmed and peaceful opposition, sentencing people to unfair punishment under erroneous terror accusations, will feed genuine terrorism in Erdogan's Turkey. Guns and violence will become the sole alternative for legally expressing free thought. On 24 June, six Turkish army soldiers were killed in two separate PKK attacks in the Kukurka district of the southeastern province of Hakkari and the Derik district of the southeastern province of Mardin. On 25 June, Turkish warplanes conducted airstrikes against PKK targets in the southeastern province of Hakkari, with no casualties reported. On 26 June, Figan Yüksekda, co-chair of the HDP, said that an ethnic cleansing war is being conducted against the Kurdish people. Lots of deaths and exiles have taken place, 600,000 Kurds have been forced to migrate from the lands they had been living in. But Kurds haven't abandoned their lands. Heavy weapons have been used during these sieges of provinces. For example in Nusaybin in southern Mardin province, F-16s have been used. On 26 June, two Turkish army soldiers were killed in a PKK attack in the Lice district of the southeastern province of Diyarbakir. On 27 June, one Turkish army soldier was killed and another two were wounded in a PKK attack in the eastern province of Bitlis. On 29 June, two Turkish army soldiers were killed in two separate PKK attacks in the Lice and Bismil districts of the southeastern province of Diyarbakir. On 29 June, two Turkish army soldiers were killed and three were wounded when a handmade explosive laid on the ground was detonated by PKK militants in the Derik district of the southeastern province of Mardin. <laughs> July On 8 July, Turkish Air Force jets launched a round of airstrikes into Kandil Mountains and Semdinli, claiming that 12 PKK militants were killed. On 8 July, the PKK launched 9 to 10 simultaneous attacks in the Semdinli district and the city of Yüksekova in southeastern Turkey. The Turkish army outpost at Artuklu was leveled and four soldiers were killed. On 9 July, two PKK militants were killed in Agri. From 9 July to 12 July, sources in the Turkish government claimed that a senior PKK figure under the name of Feyman Hussein alias Bahoz Erdal would have been assassinated in Syria. The MIT intelligence service was quoted as the source of this story. The story was initially taken up by several international media, it was however debunked when Erdl gave a radio interview on 13 July and later thoroughly deconstructed as fake. On 10 July, one PKK militants was killed in Van province. On of July, four Turkish army soldiers were killed in a PKK attack in the Semdinli district. Four PKK militants were killed and two were captured in Mardin, Kizitepe. On 20 July, Turkish Air Force jets launched a round of airstrikes into northern Iraq and killed 20 PKK militants. One village guard was killed while another two were wounded during a PKK attack in Sirvan district of the southeastern province of Syart. On 30 July 35 PKK militants were killed in Hikari after military operations were launched against PKK elements in the region. On 31 July, three Turkish soldiers were killed in Ordu by a PKK attack whom were conducting military operations. August On 1 August, five police officers were killed in Bingal after their convoy was ambushed by a remote detonated bomb. On the 11th of August, Turkish Air Force fighters struck several positions in northern Iraq killing an unspecified amount of PKK militants following PKK attacks in Hikari which killed four soldiers. On 12 August, one police officer was killed and another was injured by a PKK attack in Nusaybin. On 15 August, a PKK car bomb attack on a police station near Bismil killed six people including four police officers and a child. On 18 August, a PKK car bomb attack on a police station in Elazig killed seven police officers and wounded 224 people. 
On 18 August, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan announced that his country does not differentiate between the Gulen movement, PKK or ISIS designating them all as terrorist organizations. On 21 August, a PKK militant whom was on Turkey's most wanted list was killed by a police raid in Ordu. The militant was responsible for an attack that killed three soldiers in Turkey's southeast. On the 22nd of August, heavy clashes between PKK militants and Turkish troops in Tunceli killed one soldier. PKK militants also launched rocket attacks on police stations in the region and set two ambulances on fire. On the 23rd of August, one village guard was killed by a PKK attack on a village near Bingal. On the 24th of August, five Turkish soldiers were killed in PKK rocket attacks on a military outpost in Lice. On 24 August, one Turkish soldier was killed by an roadside bomb in Karliova. On 25 August, an unsuccessful assassination attempt was carried out by the PKK against the Republican Party leader Kemal Kilikderoglu as his convoy passed through Artvin province sparking a shootout between his private security detail accompanied by local police against PKK militants. On 25 August, during Operation Euphrates Shield while Turkish forces and pro-Turkish local militia factions liberated various towns and villages from ISIS control along the Turkish border, Kurdish YPG forces, whom Turkey claims as a Syrian extension of the PKK, opened fire on Turkish troops and killed a Turkish soldier. Turkish fighter jets and artillery immediately after the incident reportedly struck YPG positions killing 25 YPG militants. On 26 August, a PKK attack on a construction site killed two construction workers and injured two others in Hikari. On 26 August, a PKK truck bomb attack on a security checkpoint near a police station killed 11 police officers in Cizere and damaged the police station. On 28 August, a roadside bomb planted by PKK militants in Syart injured five Turkish soldiers. On 28 August, a botched PKK attack resulted in heavy clashes with Turkish troops in Hikari killing nine PKK militants and injuring two Turkish soldiers. On 29 August, four Turkish Air Force F-16s carried out air strikes on various PKK targets in northern Iraq. On 29 August, two PKK militants were killed in a police raid in Van after a report that the militants were occupying a resident's house. During the operation large sums of ammunition were also seized. Topic. September On 1 September, two soldiers in Syart and a village guard in Van were killed in PKK attacks while Turkish air strikes killed three PKK militants in Kukurka. On 2 September, Turkish riot police used tear gas and water cannon to disperse a group of protesters along the Syrian border, who demonstrated against Turkey building a wall on the Syrian border near the Kurdish-controlled Syrian town of Kobani. The UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights claims that one child had been killed and more than 30 people injured. On 2 September, Turkish soldiers killed 27 PKK militants and captured a further 30 militants during ongoing military operations in Kukurka. On 2 September, one Turkish soldier was killed during military operations in Hikari. On 2 September, Prime Minister Benali Yildirim announced that peace talks with the PKK would not restart and that military operations would continue. On 4 September 22 vehicles belonging to the PKK were captured in Lice during a military operation after a tip-off was made involving vehicles that would have been used as car bombs. On 4 September, multiple PKK attacks and relentless military operations in conjunction in Kukurka over the past weekend killed or wounded over a 104 PKK militants and 18 soldiers. On 5 September 30 PKK militants were killed in an air strike in northern Iraq bringing the total number of PKK militants killed, wounded or captured over the past weekend to 157. On 5 September, over 14,000 teachers in the country's east and southeast were suspended over having suspected links to the PKK as Prime Minister Benali Yildirim announced a new offensive stage against the war on PKK insurgency. On 9 September, the Turkish Air Force hit three different PKK positions in airstrikes launched into northern Iraq. On 9 September, two PKK militants were killed in Kukurka in an airstrike after being spotted by a surveillance drone. 
On 9 September 14 PKK militants were killed in Semdinli during military operations in the region. On 10 September 33 PKK militants were killed in air strikes in northern Iraq after the Turkish Air Force launched another round of bombings into the region striking nine locations. On 10 September, the Turkish government granted the jailed leader of the PKK, Abdullah Akalan a family visit to his island prison in Amrali where he has been incarcerated ever since his capture in 1999 in Kenya by an operation staged by the Turkish OKK coordinated with the Kenyan government. On 10 September, explosives belonging to the PKK were found hidden in five different locations of a family cemetery of a government official in Bismil. Turkish police whom discovered the Expolovs launched an investigation regarding the incident. On 10 September, Turkey announced in was swapping 28 administrations of local government municipalities in the country's southeast on having suspected links to the PKK. On 12 September, a PKK car bomb in front of the government municipality headquarters building in Van injured over 50 people. On 13 September, Dutch police announced that they would register the names of Turks and Kurds in the Netherlands who sympathize with the PKK into the national police database. On 14 September, Turkish airstrikes in Hikari killed 16 PKK militants. On 14 September, new evidence solidifying suspicions against 28 PKK-linked mayors in various provinces in Turkey's southeast arose. According to the evidence, certain local counties and municipalities were providing local government transportation and construction vehicles to PKK elements in order to transport ammunition, militants and other supplies while constructing barricades and barriers to be used against military and police targets. On 15 September, two PKK militants were killed on the Turkish-Iraqi border in an air strike after being detected by UAVs while attempting to infiltrate Turkish territory near Kukurka. On 15 September, seven local village guards, two soldiers and a civilian was killed after a security checkpoint was attacked by PKK rockets and sniper fire in Agri. One of the village guards was retired having rushed to the scene after hearing about the then ongoing attack. On 15 September, a civilian was killed in Nusaybin after an hidden explosive trap set by the PKK had detonated. On 16 September, Mehmet Ferdin Karikshi, Turkey's permanent representative to the UN's Geneva office, harshly criticized the UN's report on Thursday which does not refer to the PKK as a terrorist organization, although the group is recognized as a terrorist organization by many countries including the US, the EU, NATO and Turkey. On 16 September 11 PKK militants were killed in ongoing military operations in Hikari province while a village guard in Van was killed after attempting to prevent militants from cutting off a road. On 16 September, Turkey's third largest political parties, the Kurdish HDP's deputy co-chair along with 12 other members were arrested for allegations of recruiting Kurdish youth to join the ranks of the PKK and having direct alleged links with the militant organization. On 18 September, the Turkish military killed three PKK militants during ongoing counter-insurgency operations in Cernik. On 19 September, the Turkish Air Force struck several targets in northern Iraq's Kirkuk Governorate destroying weapons positions and killing at least two militants. On 20 September, five PKK militants were killed and several targets including munitions depots were destroyed by Turkish artillery strikes into northern Iraq during ongoing counter-insurgency operations. On of September, a Turkish shepherd was approached and killed by PKK militants in Cernik. On 23 September, a six PKK militants were killed in Hikari while one militant was captured in Mardin during ongoing military operations. On 26 September, two Turkish soldiers and two village guards were killed by an IED bomb in Mardin. On 26 September 6 Turkish soldiers were killed and two others were wounded in Uladere by a large-scale PKK rocket attack against troops patrolling a highway. On 26 September 12 PKK militants were killed Yuksekova after the Turkish military intensified combat operations in spite of recent PKK attacks. On 29 September, a Turkish military drone strike killed four PKK militants in Hikari while Turkish Air Force jets struck several PKK shelters and weapons storages in northern Iraq during a day of widespread military aerial operations in the region. 
On 29 September, the Turkish National Intelligence Organization uncovered a plot involving Kurdish YPG militants striking high-value targets within Turkey while portraying them as ISIS attacks. The intelligence report sent to police and gendarmerie stations in all 81 Turkish provinces had sparked a nationwide search for five suspects cited in the report while introducing enhanced security measures in areas deemed most vulnerable. On 29 September, PKK militants in the border province of Hikari opened fire upon volunteer defense militia and killed three village guards. On 30 September, six PKK militants were killed in Ordu during military operations. October On 3 October, Turkish army troops killed a total of 20 PKK militants during heavy clashes amidst ongoing counter-insurgency operations in Cernik. On 3 October, an IED attack on a Turkish army convoy killed two Turkish soldiers in Hikari. On 5 October, three PKK militants were killed in heavy clashes with Turkish forces in Kukurka. On 6 October, eight PKK militants were killed in a combination of air and land operations by Turkish forces ongoing in the Hikari and Agri regions. On 7 October, the bodies of five previously killed PKK militants were recovered from a cave in Kukurka along with weapon magazines, explosives and AK-type rifles used by the militants. On 8 October, Turkish forces recovered the body of an individual who had been abducted by PKK militants in a ditch on the side of a road in Sur. On 8 October, PKK militants executed a female militant attempting to flee the group. On 9 October, a PKK truck bomb attack on a Turkish gendarmerie outpost in Hikari killed 18 people including 10 Turkish soldiers and 8 civilians. On 9 October, the Turkish army killed eight PKK militants during a raid on a PKK weapons and munitions depot in Kukurka. On 10 October, Turkish police foiled a suicide bombing plot in the nation's capital, Ankara. The standoff ended with the militants detonating explosives during a police raid which only resulted in the death of the PKK militants. On 10 October, two Turkish politicians were found murdered by PKK militants in their homes in Van. Turkish police stated that the killings were assassinations targeting members of the ruling AKP. On the 11th of October, a Turkish Army T-129 attack helicopter neutralized a vehicle rigged with explosives used by PKK as a car bomb before it could ram into and detonate at nearby troops in Lice. On the 11th of October, during ongoing military operations across Turkey's southeast, 20 tons of ammonium nitrate intended for explosives use was captured in Sur. Hundreds of AK magazines were captured in Batman along with explosives, and over a thousand of varying rifle magazines and rocket munitions were captured in Kukurka. On the 12th of October, nine PKK militants were killed in Kukurka by a Turkish military drone strike. On 13 October, two PKK militants were killed during military operations in Kukurka. On 13 October, five PKK militants were killed in northern Iraq by Turkish army artillery strikes. On 13 October, one PKK militant was killed during ongoing military operations in Cernik. On 13 October, Turkish Air Force F-16s struck PKK shelters in northern Iraq. On 14 October, three Turkish soldiers inside a military vehicle were killed by a hidden roadside bomb planted by PKK militants on a highway in Mardin. On 15 October, multiple shelters and caves used by the PKK were destroyed during by Turkish military operations in Cernik, Kukurka and Bitlis. On 16 October, three PKK militants in Syart were killed by ongoing Turkish military operations. On 16 October, two PKK militants were killed and several strategic targets were destroyed by Turkish military airstrikes in northern Iraq. On 17 October 10 PKK militants were killed in Tuncheli by a Turkish military airstrike during ongoing counterinsurgency operations in the region. On 18 October, four PKK militants were killed by Turkish army operations in Kukurka. On 19 October, Turkish fighter jets struck PKK shelters in Hikari on the mountainous Turkish-Iraq border. 
On 20 October, between 9.11 p.m. and 11.59 p.m. the Turkish Air Force conducted a massive aerial operation against PKK-linked Kurdish YPG targets in Syria's Aleppo province killing up to 200 militants. Turkey has previously militarily threatened the YPG and accuses it of carrying out various terrorist attacks across the nation and of funneling U.S. arms and supplies to the PKK. In response to the massive onslaught of airstrikes into Syrian territory, the Syrian government openly threatened to shoot down Turkish jets. On 20 October 26 PKK militants and two Turkish soldiers were killed in Hakkari during Turkish army counter-insurgency operations. On 21 October 12 PKK militants in Hakkari were killed by Turkish troops during ongoing military operations to root out the separatist militant organization. On 21 October, six PKK militants in northern Iraq were killed by Turkish airstrikes. On 21 October, about 100 rockets were fired by the Turkish army into regions of Syria held by the YPG striking several targets. On the 22nd of October, the Turkish military struck 70 PKK-affiliated YPG militant targets in Syria utilizing heavy artillery and rocket systems to do so. On 23 October, seven PKK militants were killed by the Turkish armed forces in Tunceli during counter-insurgency operations. On 23 October, two Turkish policemen were killed by a PKK attack in the eastern Provence of Bingal. On 24 October, Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu in a meeting with his French counterpart Jean-Marc Ayrault assured the public with a statement that Turkey would begin to more actively fight the PKK in Iraq in addition the insurgency in the nation's southeast. On 24 October, Turkish Army A-1 Super Cobra attack helicopters and F-16 fighter jets struck and destroyed several targets killing two PKK militants. On 24 October, six PKK militants were killed in Turkish army operations in Semdinli. On 24 October, seven PKK militants were killed in Turkish army operations in Kukurka. On 29 October, three Turkish soldiers were killed in an ambush in Kukurka. Also, an amateur footage revealed showing Turkish soldiers execute two female PKK captives. On 31 October 13 PKK militants and three Turkish soldiers were killed in heavy clashes in Hakkari. November On 1 November, Turkish military air strikes destroyed several PKK targets in Kukurka and northern Iraq. On 2 November, six PKK militants surrendered to Turkish forces in Silopi. On 2 November, Turkish military airstrikes destroyed several PKK targets in Kukurka. On 3 November, Turkish military operations killed five PKK militants, two in Bitlis, two in northern Iraq and one in Lice. On 4 November, at least nine people were killed and more than 100 injured in a car bomb attack outside the police headquarters in central Diyarbakir. The governor of Diyarbakir province, Kahit Kirak, said the Kurdistan Workers' Party had claimed responsibility. The bombing took place just hours after the arrests of pro-Kurdish HDP leaders, Selahattin Demeritas and Figan Yüksekdağ whom are accused by the Turkish government to have ties to the outlawed PKK organization. On 4 November 14 PKK militants were killed in widespread Turkish military operations, seven in Cernik, three in Hakkari, three in northern Iraq, and one in Lice while a separate militant surrendered in Nusaybin. On 5 November 17 PKK militants in ongoing Turkish military operations were killed, 14 in Cernik and three in Hakkari. On 14 November, two PKK militants were killed by Turkish forces in Sizer. On 16 November, two PKK militants were killed in Turkish military counter-insurgency operations in Uladere. On 18 November, two PKK militants were killed by a Turkish reconnaissance unit after an clash had erupted in Nusaybin. On 20 November 12 PKK militants were killed in by a Turkish military drone strike in Daglika. On 29 November, security forces killed at least 10 PKK insurgents in Cernik. December 
On 2 December, a military operation left three soldiers dead and another three were wounded in Hakkari Province, Turkey. Twenty PKK militants were killed or captured as well during the operation. On 10 December, a twin PKK linked suicide bombing attack in Istanbul against riot police maintaining security for a Besiktas soccer game killed 36 police officers and eight civilians. Following the attack hundreds of suspects were arrested including dozens of pro-Kurdish HDP party members. A Turkish fighter jet crashed near an airport in the Kurdish city of Diyarbakir on December 12, the military said, but the pilot was able to safely eject from the plane. According to a government spokesman the plane had fallen due to a possible technical malfunction. Also PKK militants took responsibility for the downed Turkish jet. On 17 December a PKK-linked group carried out another attack in Kayseri using a car bomb to ram a public bus full of off-duty paratrooper commandos killed 14 troops. 2017 timeline January On 5 January, a shootout in Izmir kills two gunmen. During the shootout a car bomb explodes, killing a police officer and court employee. Vesey Koenig states that the discovery of more weapons on the scene suggests that a larger attack was foiled. Provincial Governor Errol Ayildiz blames the attack on the PKK. On 13 and 14 January, at least 57 PKK fighters were killed and scores of others injured in Turkish airstrikes in northern Iraq, the Turkish general staff said in a statement. Topic. February Topic. March On 9 March 19 PKK fighters and one Turkish soldier were killed in military operations in southeastern Diyarbakir and eastern Bengal provinces that was launched by Turkey on 5 March. Topic. April On 24 April 90 YPG, Yazidi Ybiz and Peshmerga fighters were killed in an air raid conducted by the Turkish Air Force against targets in Syria, and Iraq. Turkish authorities claim YPG militants are directly affiliated with the PKK. On 29 April 45 PKK militants were killed in airstrikes by the Turkish Air Force against militant targets in Iraq. May. Topic June. Topic July. Topic August. Topic September. Topic October. Topic November. Topic December. Topic 2018 timeline. Topic January. On the 20th of January 2018, the Turkish military began an attack in the Afrin region of Syria, code named by Turkey as Operation Olive Branch (Turkish: Zeytin Dali Harikati). The offensive is against the Kurdish-led Democratic Union Party in Syria PYD, its armed wing People's Protection Units YPG, and Syrian Democratic Forces SDF positions surrounding the Syrian city of Afrin. Turkey also says it is fighting ISIL, though ISIL does not exist in Afrin. Afrin and the surrounding area is claimed by the Democratic Federation of Northern Syria as the Afrin region. It is the first major military operation by Turkey in Syria since Operation Euphrates Shield. Topic: February. Topic: March. Topic: April. Topic: May. Topic: June. Topic July Topic August Topic September 
Topic October. Topic November. Topic December. Topic Parties. Topic Turkish military and affiliates. Turkish forces consisting of Turkish land forces troops, gendarmerie operatives and police special operations teams are backed by the rest of the Turkish armed forces. They are supported by a system of ''village guards'', which represent a feudal part of Turkey. There have been recurring reports of the resurfacing GDM, ''military police intelligence and anti-terrorist service'', which had been responsible for massacres in the 1990s, and of irregular foreign jihadists, being employed, the Turkish government of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the Justice and Development Party AKP are increasingly portraying the party they oppose as an enemy of an ''Islamic order'', referring to the PKK and its affiliates and supporters as ''atheists and Zoroastrians''. Topic. PKK and affiliates In 2008, according to information provided by the Intelligence Resource Program of the Federation of American Scientists the strength of the organization in terms of human resources consists of approximately 4,000 to 5,000 militants of whom 3,000 to 3,500 are located in northern Iraq. With the new wave of fighting from 2015 onwards, observers noted that active support for the PKK had become a mass phenomenon. In majority ethnic Kurdish cities in the southeast of the Republic of Turkey, with large numbers of local youth joining PKK affiliated local militant groups. According to Turkish estimates, the PKK has a much larger size than the previously stated size, standing at over 32,800 active fighters spanning across northwestern Syria, southeastern Turkey, northern Iraq, and northwestern Iran, concentrated on the Kandil mountain range. PKK bases remain active in northern Iraq and its leadership suspectedly in the Kandil Mountains in Iraq and Iran. From the traditional preceding Turkish PKK conflicts the PKK rebellion has transitioned into urban warfare in the country's densely populated southeast. Impact Civilian impact According to Turkish Human Rights Foundation, there have been 52 intermittent curfews in seven predominantly Kurdish towns where 1.3 million people live, sometimes lasting as long as 14 days. The organization puts the civilian death toll since the summer of 2015 at 124. The situation in the southeast has little coverage in the Turkish media. The authorities have enforced a blockade over the region and have shut down both cell phone coverage and the internet. Hundreds of houses, dozens of schools and official buildings have been damaged by artillery and gun fire from militants, and civilians have been allegedly fired at. Turkish forces have used measures like tank fire to clear out bomb-trapped barricades which lead to damage of residential buildings. It is estimated that more than 200,000 people have been displaced. According to the HRW, civilian death toll is around 100. Diyarbakir branch of the Human Rights Association accuses Turkish armed forces and gendarmerie of targeting civilians under the pretext of fighting terrorism. Many residents in the southeastern cities have been trapped without food or electricity as clashes between Kurdish militants and Turkish security forces have intensified. In December 2015, town of Sizer, was under curfew for more than two weeks, with mounting civilian casualties. According to a teacher from the district of Silopi, the tanks fire all day and people have nowhere left to hide and they are dying in their own homes. Topic. Internal reactions Topic. Academics petition On January 11, 2016, more than 1,000 scholars and academics from 90 Turkish universities and abroad signed a petition entitled we won't be a party to this crime. Calling for an end to the government's crackdown on the Kurdish activists and politicians, and a resumption of the peace process. They also criticized the use of tanks in urban centers calling it a deliberate massacre of Kurdish people. 
On January 12, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan sharply criticized the dissident academics which included David Harvey, Emanuel Wallerstein, Slavoj Žižek and Noam Chomsky and accused them of being a fifth column of foreign powers. He also called on the Turkish judiciary to move against the treachery. All 1,228 Turkish signatories were subsequently placed under investigation. Erdogan invited Chomsky to visit the area in a televised speech to a conference of Turkish ambassadors in Ankara. However Chomsky rejected the offer and said, "'If I decide to go to Turkey, it will not be on his invitation, but as frequently before at the invitation of the many courageous dissidents, including Kurds who have been under severe attack for many years." He also accused Erdogan of aiding ISIS and the al-Nusra Front. On January 14, Düzce University in northwest Turkey dismissed an associate sociology professor after she signed the declaration and on January 15, Erdogan attacked the signatories again, accusing them of supporting the Kurdish rebels and said, "...having a PhD title doesn't necessarily make you an intellectual. These are people in the dark. They are cruel and despicable." That same day, Turkish authorities arrested 14 signatories, including 12 academics from Koseli University, accusing them of spreading terrorism propaganda and of insulting the state. U.S. Ambassador John Bass released a statement expressing his concern regarding the arrests. He also said, Expressions of concern about violence do not equal support for terrorism. Criticism of government does not equal treason. On January 16, main opposition leader Kemal Kilikderoğlu sharply criticized Erdogan over detention of dissident academics and called him a dictator. Two days later, lawyers for Turkish president filed a lawsuit against him and a prosecutor from the Ankara Prosecutor's Office also launched an investigation into his comments on charges of "...openly insulting the president", a crime punishable by up to four years in jail. Resignation of UNESCO Ambassador On May 25, 2016, the noted Turkish author and poet Zulfu Levaneli resigned as Turkey's only UNESCO goodwill ambassador. In his post on Twitter, he noted, "...UNESCO's silence on human rights violations and lack of fundamental freedoms," and he also refused to take part in the World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul. He highlighted destruction of historical Sur district of Diyarbakir as his main reason for resignation. When Kurdish region Sur's historical heritage is being destroyed, I can't with a straight face urge people to protect the historical heritage of Istanbul. Topic. Protests in New York On March 31, 2016, during a public speech by Erdogan at the Brookings Institution, his supporters and opponents clashed outside the venue. His security guards assaulted Brookings employees and ordered a well-known Turkish journalist, Amberin Zaman, to leave, calling her a PKK whore. Security staff members had to stop the guards from removing other journalists from inside the auditorium. Some Turkish guards were restrained by police officers. National Press Club released a statement and expressed alarm at the events. Turkey's leader and his security team are guests in the United States. They have no right to lay their hands on reporters or protesters or anyone else for that matter, when the people they are apparently roughing up seem to be merely doing their jobs or exercising the rights they have in this country. U.S. State Department 2016 Human Rights Report According to the report, in February 2016, Turkish security forces killed at least 130 people, including unarmed civilians, who had taken shelter in the basements of three buildings in the town of Sizer. A domestic NGO, the Human Rights Association HRA, accused security forces of killing more than 300 civilians in the first eight months of 2016. It also reported retrieval of 171 bodies from three basements in Sizer after February 5. The Human Rights Foundation of Turkey HRF, reported that during the 79-day curfew in Sizer, close to 200 people were killed. On 3 March 2016, HRF's president, Sebnem Korurfinkansi, found a human jawbone in the remains of a basement in the Sur district of Diyarbakir, where according to HRA seven people were killed in February 2016. <laughs> <laughs> International reactions 
Council of Europe, on 14 April 2016, Nils Muijenex, the Council's Human Rights Commissioner, said after visiting the city of Diyarbakir, respect for human rights has deteriorated at an alarming speed in recent months in the context of Turkey's fight against terrorism. European Union, the EU has frequently called for an immediate ceasefire and urged all sides to renew the settlement process with the Kurdish minority in Turkey. On 7 March 2016, EU Foreign Policy Chief Federica Mogherini said, there is a need to restart the Kurdish peace process. The European Union recognizes that PKK is a terrorist organization, but there is a need to re-engage from the Turkish authorities' side with the Kurdish political representatives and the ones that express their position in a peaceful way. The European Parliament has been highly critical with respect to human rights abuses and denial of political dialogue with respect to the Kurdish issue under the cloak of fight against terrorism in Turkey. The institutions of the European Union have persistently criticized the broad application of anti-terror legislation as well as a criminal law against denigrating Turkishness in Turkey as stifling peaceful advocacy for Kurdish rights. Germany, on 19 January 2016, German ambassador to Turkey Martin Erdmann has voiced Berlin's unconditional support to Ankara's ongoing fight against the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party PKK, while underlining that a final and permanent solution to the Kurdish issue could only be found on political grounds. The ambassador quoted, fighting against the PKK and defending itself against the PKK is Turkey's most natural right. However, according to the German federal government's conviction, this problem can reach a final and permanent result only on a political platform. Conflict in Turkey's southeast has often reflected on Germany's Turkish and Kurdish minorities causing mass riots and the build-up of ethnic tensions within Germany. NATO, on 7 July 2015, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg expressed solidarity with Turkey after an emergency session of the Military Alliance's 28 ambassadors in Brussels. Stoltenberg also expressed NATO as watching the developments, very closely. Netherlands, on 13 September 2016, Dutch police announced that they would register supports and sympathizers of the PKK into the National Police Database. Russia – Russia has frequently denied Turkish accusations of support to the PKK and called on Turkey to politically solve its Kurdistan issue. For example in this quote of the Russian Foreign Ministry on 5 June 2016, we understand that it is difficult for current Turkish leadership to abandon attempts to explain their domestic problems by certain external factors. With the civil conflict with the Kurdish population unremitting, President Erdogan has not found a better justification for toughening the punitive operations in the Kurdish populated southeast than to accuse Russia of supplying arms to the Kurdistan Workers' Party. United Kingdom, on 14 January 2016, the British ambassador to Turkey issued a statement on the behalf of the British government condemning the PKK, while calling on the militant organization to halt its attacks against Turkey. The ambassador stated, let me emphasize that we condemn PKK terrorism absolutely. But we don't just make statements, we are also actively clamping down on PKK financing in the UK, and doing our utmost to disrupt their international network and operations. United Nations, in May 2016, the UN High Commissioner of Human Rights Zaid Riyad al-Hussein raised an alarm over violence against civilians and alleged human rights abuses in predominantly Kurdish southeast Turkey. He also raised concern over the Turkish government's refusal to allow a UN team to conduct research in the area amid reports that more than a hundred people had burned to death in buildings surrounded by security forces. The commissioner stated, More and more information has been emerging from a variety of credible sources about the actions of security forces in the town of Sizer during the extended curfew there from mid-December until early March. He said in a press release, most disturbing of all are the reports quoting witnesses and relatives in Cizere which suggest that more than 100 people were burned to death as they sheltered in three different basements that had been surrounded by security forces. However, the Turkish Foreign Ministry offered an open invitation to UN agencies to visit the country's southeastern provinces after the reports were made and refuted those statements, saying they were based on insufficient information. According to the UN Commissioner, unarmed civilians, including women and children, were shot by government snipers in the southeast during the clashes and Turkish forces also inflicted significant damage on the local infrastructure. 
Turkish sources, whose reports were confirmed by the Turkey's foreign ministry had claimed late 2015 that the PKK were hiring foreign national snipers to target civilians and high-ranking military personnel in the same region. United States, according to Turkish Daily Sabag, on 28 April 2016, Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter allegedly confirmed that it believes the YPG militia in the Federation of Northern Syria, Rojava, which is supported by the United States, has some connections with the PKK, which is considered a terrorist organization by the US and NATO. He also allegedly noted Turkey is upset with the US's position on Syrian Kurds and that the Obama administration has extensive consultations with the Turks over the issue. However, the U.S. support for that secular militia in the Syrian civil war was even expanded, during the May 2016 offensive against the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL in northern Raqqa, U.S. special operation forces were widely reported and photographed to be present, and to wear badges of YPG and YPJ on their uniforms. When in June 2016 the Manbij offensive of the Syrian Democratic Forces started, the Washington Post reported it under the headline of, "...ignoring Turkey, U.S. backs Kurds in drive against ISIS in Syria." The U.S. has a numerous of times stated that the U.S. don't see the YPG as a terrorist organization. See also Cizer Operation 2015 2015-16 Cernic Clashes 2015-16 Hikari Assault West Iran Clashes Topic References Topic Bibliography Acarius Kelly, Vera 2011 the Militant Kurds, A Dual Strategy for Freedom. Prager. ISBN 978-0-313-36468-6.